Uh, regular watchers of the channel might think they're having some deja vu because a few months ago, actually probably like a year or more, um, I made some shelves to house a bunch of my um, machinist calibration stuff. And I talked a little bit about uh, gauge pins, but I want this, I'm this is a whole video about gauge pins. Um, so, I've talked about metrology on this channel before, or the science of measurement. And one of the things I came to understand uh, in attempting to machine things on the mill and the lathe in finer and finer increments is at a certain point, one stops using measuring equipment and starts using comparative equipment. That is to say, if I have a, I'm actually here. Now, I've often said this in regard, I've often said this in regards to um, calipers like this. Um, and these calipers measure four different things. They can measure depth, they can measure a step, they can measure uh, external diameter, and they can measure interminal, interminable diameter. They can measure an internal diameter. But, but, hang on. I'm just trying to find something here that will yield. Okay, here we go. A nice sound. Okay, so let us say you are presented with a hole like that, and you want to know what diameter that hole is. And you want to know exactly. You don't want to know partially. If you want to know partially, what you do is you go over to a... Uh, You go to a drill index and you pull out each of the drills and you find the one that is closest to the size of this hole. But drill bits are like... Drill bits are like in increments of 10 thousandths at a time. So if you want to know really precisely what diameter this is, 10 thousandths isn't 10,000, uh, sorry, like using drill bits, which are 10, 10 thousandths of an inch apart, it's gonna get you in the ballpark, but not to any degree of exactitude. Now, if you had a hole like this, well, you could measure it with um, what's called telescoping gauges. I'm gonna get one of those and show them to you. This is a telescoping gauge. And for reasonable internal diameter hole sizing, these are terrific. They'll get you plus or minus about a thousandth, um, which is fine, which is fine. Uh, and so like, here, here's how you use a pin gauge. Uh, you you, uh, you can compress it, tighten it. Now it fits inside there. So now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna, Loosen it, right? So now the two telescoping sides come up. Now, I believe the correct operation is to not have it at a perfectly straight angle, but tighten it when it is close close to perpendicular and then bring it perpendicular. And when you do that, yeah, when you do that, you've brought these two convex sides into point contact with the internal diameter Tighten it up one last tighten. And then you can measure this with your calipers and say, all right, that is about 1.54 ID. I'm gonna trust that within two or three thousandths, not letter, not necessarily one thou. I'm gonna get close and I'm gonna creep up on it if I had to make something that perfectly fit the inside of this. But you, we've been talking about this hole. We want to know what diameter this hole is, and there is no telescoping gauge small enough. There are bore gauges. Bore gauges are not for the hobbyist. Seriously, they are expensive. They have limited ranges, so to get a wide range of bore gauges would cost thousands and thousands of dollars because of the difference between a bore gauge and a telescoping gauge. Telescoping gauge has only two lobes, so you kind of have to 
I usually take like three measurements with the telescoping gauges to make sure I'm getting the right measurement because there's a lot of room for error. A good bore gauge has three points of contact and therefore it finds its way in the middle. It's kind of mechanically amazing. But again, bore gauges are, that's for industrial work where you've got to do go, no go, QC or whatever. But for the hobbyist, the hobby machinist, uh, I own a bore gauge and I'm not sure I'm ever going to use it. It was a gift from Mitu Toyo. Um, I told them that. I was, I'm not sure I'm ever going to use this, but it's such a beautiful machine. I want one. Okay, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. Give me a second. This is my Mitu Toyo bore gauge and it measures the range from two point from 0.275 to 0.5. From just over a quarter inch to about a half an inch. And here is the bore gauge and here are the three points of contact. And when you squeeze this handle, they go in. Mechanically, that's kind of amazing that it does it that precise. And then there are two other two other heads for this that will bring you all the way up to your half inch size. This is a masterpiece of engineering, but it is crazy expensive and not really a solution. Um, you can calibrate these with the calibration discs that come, so you can make sure that your measurement is zeroed out to the correct measurement. Um, okay, so all of this has been a way of me saying we want to learn internal diameters of certain sizes of holes, and this isn't necessarily an everyday solution. And this is definitely, I, I mean, again, this gets you into the hardware store department of like, ah, it's close enough. But like trying to use these for a super precise internal diameter measurement, again, I would trust this to plus or minus 10 or 15 thou um, simply because of how much introduced error there can be from trying to hold these two things perfectly perpendicular and watch the dial as it sweeps past and the way it behaves. So what is the solution? Well, it's the title of this video. It's pin gauges. Give me a sec to put a couple things away. All right. So I've got this hole. I want to know exactly what size it is. Well, there I look upon the landscape of pin gauges and the world is my oyster. So what a pin gauge is, oh, I forgot to put that away. Hold on. Every time I roll around in my chair, I feel like the old granddad from Witness. And if you haven't seen the movie Witness with Harrison Ford, Kelly McGillis, and Danny Glover as the villain, oh, young Lucas Haas, Witness is a Peter Weir film and, um, if that name doesn't mean anything to you, then you're in for a treat because Peter Weir's entire filmography from The Last Wave all the way up to Master Commander and beyond is an incredible filmography of someone who deeply loves storytelling and film, but I get ahead of myself. Um, gauge pins are steel pins manufactured to a high degree of precision. How high uh, is dependent upon how much you want to spend on them. These are medium grade, shop grade. And to buy all five of these sets, I think was, was hundreds of dollars. Um, it's not, not cheap. And yet I had a need for one set and I bought it and I loved using it so much I completed the collection because I thought I'm gonna have these for the rest of my natural life and I had no idea how useful these things would be to me. I use them almost weekly. So here's the first way. Uh, I've got a hole here, I wanna find out. So the gauge pins go from 11 thousandths, that's the smallest one, all the way to 750 thousandths or three quarters of an inch. For the record, 11 thousandths is about the thickness of two sheets of heavy paper, mm-hmm. So I start to, and it's by 1,000, 1,000 of an inch increments. So there's 232, 233, 234, 235. And you sit there and you pop these things in. 240, 243, yeah, keep going. 25, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, it's a quarter inch hole. Perfect quarter inch hole. And just to double check, I'm going to go with 0.26 here. 
No. And that's what you do. You put these in until you find one that goes in where it's next one up does not go in. So 0.251 inches, uh -uh. 0.25, yes, that's a perfect quarter inch hole. Now, I probably could have known that by measuring the pin that came out of that, but if you don't know, you don't know. So you gotta use something like this to know. That's how you know. Um, there's another way in which gauge pins are incredibly useful, uh, which is this. Actually, just give me one sec. So another frequent occurrence in the measuring of things is not just to know what size hole you have, but where it is. So let us say, I, this is a piece of steel, uh, this is like a setup block for the mill. Um, I picked this up on Craigslist a bunch of years ago. It's useful, it's a super flat ground, perpendicular, parallel uh, thing that you can use to bolt stuff to. But maybe I have to make a piece that marries to this. Uh, and as such, I would need to know the precise placement of this hole. Is it perfectly centered? Is this distance the same as this distance? What is going on here? So in those, in that instance, I would take a pin gauge, a gauge pin. I'm always mixing those up. Let's see here. Let's go to that one. Ooh, ooh. Not quite. Oh, maybe I nailed it. Oh boy, did I? Yeah, uh, you get a feel for this after a while. Okay, so now that I've got this gauge pin and it is lining up with the threads, it is nice and rigid in there, there's almost no movement at all. Well, then I can use the step feature of this to determine that is exactly 0.397 inches from the top. Let's double check that. No, it's 0.4, yep. And uh, just to double check the maker's work, let's just, let's try this one too. <laughs> it's not quite, this is a homemade piece of equipment. That's 0.38, uh, but okay. So this is 0.34 inches from the end, point, sorry, 0.4 inches from the end, nice zero set. Um, now we're going to test. Yeah, it's a little less. Point three eight eight. Look, I'm, um, this isn't, I'm not showing you the official way to take these measurements. Again, point three eight eight. So, what I can tell you now is that I can guarantee that it's centered between these two sides and its outside edge is 0.4 inches from the edge, which means if I want to know where the center of this hole is, I need only measure the diameter of this, which is 0.211. Alexa, what is half of 211? Half of 211 is 105.5. 0.1055 added to 0.4. So it's 0.5055 is the center of this from the outside edge. I could have done that math. I was just really lazy. Um, now I can take those measurements and put them into the digital readout of my mill and I can manufacture a piece that fits this exactly. And only having pins with a resolution of 1,000th allows me that level of accuracy uh, to do such a thing. And like I said, I've ended up using these things almost weekly since I got them. They're one of the best additions to my cave uh, collection here. Um, I'm not necessarily recommending that you go get them. They, they, they can be truly spendy, without a doubt. Um, but this is one of those cases where I decided to invest in a tool that I thought would be useful and I have been astounded by how right I was and just how useful they are. Thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Um, I would love to know uh, machinists, both amateur and professional, in the comments, what are some of your favorite uh, machine tools that you might not normally hear about in the normal course of machining? 
Um, these are also great for figuring out the distance between two holes. Again, it's just doing the math of the measurement between and then adding half of the diameter of each of the pins. Um, I have lost a couple of, of these pins over the years and have had to replace them. They're quite easy to replace. Uh, and now I have a couple of extras. Um, if you buy these from a factory where they were heavily used, they'll often be missing one. Um, these are frequently used in quality control for whether or not uh, some manufacturing pieces are within or without tolerance. Um, and each of them comes with a oil paper to keep them from getting too much moisture in them. That is really important. I often give these a little bit of a spray with BioShield, with BowShield T9, which I use for preserving my, my steel calibration equipment. Uh, it's nice, gentle, and unlike WD-40, it doesn't evaporate. Uh, it stays on them and creates a nice rust-proof film. Yeah, thanks you guys. Thanks you guys for joining me for this one, for this tool tip. Um, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.